I would request Mr. Cisip to say a few remarks. Thank you. Being the oldest person in this meeting, I hope that you will tolerate more than a few words. But I thought that you might be interested in a rather long career of dealing with all the foreign chambers and bringing investments into the country. I would say that the first such a case was under President Makapaga. At that time, Japanese firms were not permitted to do business in the Philippines. And the Bank of Tokyo wanted to invest in the development company that the World Bank had asked me to organize. So I went to see President Makapaga and said, well, the war is over. Should we just forget about the war a bit and permit Japanese companies now to come in. And that was the first case of the Bank of Tokyo. Thereafter, Mitsubishi, Mitsui, Marubeni, and all those companies did come in. The second case that I would like to narrate to you, and the, a good friend of mine, the chairman of Texas Instrument, I wanted him to set up an operation here. So he told me when he's coming to Asia, he would let me know. And so I got a, at that time a telegram from him that he's coming on Friday evening and can I spend Saturday and Sunday with him. I had to cancel my golf game with Jobo Fernandez David Choi, Charlie Palanca, and they got mad at me for that. But that weekend I spent with Mark Shefford, convinced him that Texas Instrument should take a look at the Philippines. Now, they did send a team over. Well, first of all, since then, I've never touched a golf club. I gave up the game, you know? <laughs> because of foreign investors coming in. <laughs> At any rate, the, they sent the team over, and they decided that they would like to establish a plant in Baguio. Now, at that time, our export zone was the, somewhere in Bataan. And so I had to see the government. I said, you want a company like Texas Instrument to come in? But what can we do? You have only one export zone. Then they told me, Wash, remember, this is martial law. We have an advantage. So they drafted a decree for President Marcos to sign, and he signed it immediately. And Texas Instruments thought, what efficiency the Philippines has. <laughs> no. But the net result of it was the Texas Instrument exports about three billion from the Baguio plant when they wanted to set up a second plant in Clark Air Base. The, and you must remember there was an earthquake in Baguio that brought down the Hyatt Hotel and Country Club and so on. But the plant was not damaged. Many of the homes of the workers were damaged, but they interrupted production by only one day. So Texas Instrument was very grateful for the loyalty of their staff. When the second plant to be established in Clark Air Base, the Chinese government wanted that plant in China, but then they finally chose the Philippines. So total exports of Texas Instrument, if I remember correctly, are now about four billion five hundred million, the largest exporter in the Philippines. The third case that I want to tell you, and there are really many cases, so pardon me, 
is a carnation. You all know carnation milk. <coughs> and I, but carnation entered into an agreement with pet milk, their competitor, but in the United States. And they agreed to call the company in the Philippines General Milk without identification of either company. So when the director from Carnation came, I was under strict instructions not to mention Carnation because they were already here. I brought them to see President Matsaisai and I mentioned General Milk would like to establish a plant here. And he looked at me and there was no recognition of any as to why I was there. So I broke my instructions. And I mentioned that pet general milk is carnation also. He says, carnation, I used to drink it as a little boy. What do you want? Then he immediately called up the central bank and he said, please help them. This is a good project for the Philippines. So sometimes you have to use your discretion. So at the beginning, they didn't even want to put the name Carnation on the label. Finally, since the sales were not going too well, I asked them to put the flower Carnation on the label. Then the sales went up and everything came out very well. But that's another example of a foreign investment. Then I'd like to also claim some credit. <coughs> In the early 1980s, I realized that SGV should improve its IT knowledge. Two firms offered me a million dollars a year to send my people to the US to train on IT, provided I don't join another firm. I said, once they're trained and the usage of information technology was not much here, where do they get the jobs? And they did admit that they, that they had no solution. At that time, I got together with Arthur Anderson and I told them that I want them to establish a training center in the Philippines and to feed jobs in to the country. That in 1983, 84, was the first outsourcing company that was established. And that company later on is called, as you know by now, the name Accenture. I'm glad Arthur Anderson at that time had a joint venture with IBM and they fed jobs into the firm. And now that industry has one million direct employment increasing by 100,000 per year. So I do claim a bit of credit for starting the first such firm. Now, there are certain other things that uh, I should comment on. I was shocked to see many bishops signing a petition just two days ago asking for continuation of land reform. Land reform in the change in our constitution after Kori Aquino came in, was supposed to affect only rice because of the success of land reform in Taiwan and Japan. Unfortunately, certain leftist group included land reform on all agricultural products. That I'm sorry to say, has set back 
the Philippines, we had the best agricultural school in Los Banos. The Thais sent their people to study there, brought back Filipina wives aside from their knowledge of the agriculture, and the prosperity of Thailand on agriculture has been partly due to Los Banos and partly to our own foolishness in including all agriculture there. On the day that that provision was passed, I was with Jobo Fernandez at the board meeting of Far East Bank. They, together with other banks, cut off credit to all large-scale agriculture. The net result, you will be shocked. You probably won't believe it. Indonesia was so far behind the Philippines when I started the firm there about 45 years ago. Now, per capita income, Indonesia is $1,000 above the Philippines. You won't believe it, but that's the those are the facts. So when the other day, just two days ago, I saw that the bishops were asking for continuation of land reform to give money to the farmers, there's no such thing at all. What the farmers want is more modern agriculture, the best methods of increasing productivity and so on. But we hope that the expiration of that land reform provision this year will cause, and has caused many large companies now to start going into agriculture to introduce more modern methods for the Philippines and hopefully to raise farm inc income. Now, I must say that uh, the one thing that I've failed is this. I hope it's on the way. I was one of those with Ambassador Ramon de Rosario who started Asian Inch of Management because I felt that this was started with Harvard Business School because we wanted Filipinos who cannot afford to go abroad to have the best education here. So this AIM was started, but times have changed. And now I have strongly, strongly urged AIM to start a new degree MBA-Engineering. <coughs> All of you are aware that we are short of engineers. Now, I've been pressing AIM to do this. I think it, they say that it's on the way, but I would like them to move a bit faster to have a degree called AIM would have MBA-Engineering. Ateneo already has a degree called MBA-Medical Science. And there are many other schools have MBA-East Asian Studies, mba dash, And I hope that the current management of AIM, maybe with more pressure from you, would we'll so, we'll soon complete the negotiations with LaSalle so that AIM becomes the business, graduate business school of LaSalle University with a degree <coughs> MBA dash <coughs> engineering. <coughs> I want to end this by just saying that there are boundless opportunities in the Philippines for both Filipinos and foreigners. And I still hope that with the assistance of the current government and with my predecessor, the young lady seated there, <laughs> that uh, we can further increase investments that will be of use 
for all the foreign chambers that are here today. Thank you. May we request the Arangkada Chief of Party, Mr. John Forbes, Secretary Baldos, and Secretary Almendras to join our Lifetime Achievement Awardee on stage for a photo opportunity. Congratulations to our Lifetime Achievement Awardee.